Module 3, problem number 11, a nutritionist wants to determine how much time nationally people spend eating and drinking. Suppose for a random sample of 952 people age 15 or older, the mean amount of time spent eating or drinking per day is 1.17 hours with a standard deviation of 0.51 hour. Complete parts A through D below. Just before we dive in, let's take a quick look. So we are given a random sample. That means that we have some larger population and we're taking a smaller random sample of 952. So we're gonna use that smaller sample to help estimate the population mean. In order to estimate that population mean, we're gonna give some interval that we're pretty confident that population mean is within. That's our confidence interval. So part A, a histogram of time spent eating and drinking each day is skewed right. That means not normal or not symmetric. It's skewed right. Use this result to explain why a large sample size is needed to construct a confidence interval for the mean time spent eating and drinking each day. So let's look at our options. Since the distribution of time spent eating and drinking each day is not normally distributed, skewed right, the sample must be large so that the distribution of the sample mean will be approximately normal. That is true. That's what we talked about um, if you have a large enough sample size, you can assume some normality or the sample mean uh, with normality. So that means um, we have the other options are the distribution of sample mean will never be approximately normal. Not true. The distribution of the sample mean will always be approximately normal. Also not true. And since the distribution of time spent eating and drinking each day is normally distributed, which we already know that's not true because it said it's not. So we know that option A is the correct option. Fantastic. All right. And Part B, in 2010, there were over 200 million people nationally ages, age 15 or older. Explain why this, along with the fact that the data were obtained using a random sample, satisfies the requirements for constructing a confidence interval. Well, over here, from the lesson this week, we know that we have this little pur handy purple box that tells us some of the requirements for constructing a confidence interval around a population proportion. Um, first is that n times p hat times 1 minus p hat is greater than or equal to 10, and the other is that sample size n must be less than or equal to 0 0.05 times the population size. That's the big N. That means that our sample has to be less than or equal to the population size. Let's look over here to see if that's an option. Here we have the sample size is greater than 5%. That's not it. The sample size is less than 10%. We already know it's not 10%. Sample size is greater than 10%. Also not it. The sample size is less than 5% of the population, and that's exactly what we just found in our definition there. All right. Determine and interpret a 99% confidence interval for the mean amount of time Americans age, age 15 or older spend eating and drinking each day. Let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch. I'm going to pop that out to look a little, so we can look at them side by side. Now, we're doing the population mean. We are not doing the population proportion. That means we're gonna to go to stat, T stats. Here we have one sample and we have with summary. We don't have a data set. We just know the stamp sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So that's with summary. So if we go back to our problem, we're given that the mean right here is 1.17. And our standard deviation is 0 0.51, 0 0.51. Our sample size is right here was 952. So we put that in 952. Now we come down here, we make sure that confidence interval is checked. Here it's automatically assumes that we're doing a 95, but we're actually doing a 99% confidence interval. So we need to change that to 99 and click compute. And then it brings up this table. So we have our lower limit and our upper limit. Now we need to come down here and find out which option matches our interpretation of a confidence interval. Here we have the nutritionist is 99% confident that the amount of time spent eating or drinking per day for any individual is between blank and blank. We have the, the nutritionist is 99% confident that the mean amount of time spent eating or drinking per day is between blank and blank. There is a 99% prob probability that the mean, of ma mean amount of time spent eating or drinking per day. And then the requirements for constructing a confidence interval are not satisfied. Well, we already know that we met those. We also know that it's not necessarily that there's a 99% probability of this happening. We know that we're saying that we're 99% confident. So that's between this one or this one. And we're not looking at the amount of time. We're looking at the mean amount of time. So that tells us the answer B is our option. And let's go ahead and put in, we have to round to three decimal places. So we have 1.127 for the lower limit. And the upper limit is 1.213. 213. Let's check our answer. Good job. 
All right, part D. Could the interval be used to estimate the mean amount of time a nine-year-old spends eating or drinking each day? Explain. Well, let's go back up here. Our sample, it says, suppose for a random sample of 952 people of ages of age 15 or older. That already tells us that nine-year-olds were not considered in this, this survey at all or this um, sample. So no, we can definitely not use this interval to estimate anything with the, um, a nine-year-old. So we know it's either going to be A or D. So here it says, no, the interval is about individual time. That doesn't sound right. Here D says, no, the interval is about people age 15 or older. The mean amount of time spent eating or drinking per day for nine-year-olds may differ. And that is our answer. So check answer. Excellent. That's problem number 11 for module three. If you have any questions, let me know.